Hey guys, welcome to another edition of State Champs Michigan's High School Sports Show. This is the program where we get all the content that we collect in a certain week, throw it all in a show so you can just kind of see everything that took place and what we covered throughout the state of Michigan last week. Let's get to it. We begin with a Thursday night matchup in the Macomb Area Conference Bronze Division. Madison Heights Lamphere on the road to take on the Cavaliers from St. Clair Shores South Lake. Both coming in perfect at 3-0. Listen to this. Lamphere has outscored its opponents 130 to nothing through its first three games. First quarter, the junior Nico Hernandez walks it in from three yards out. Rams out to a seven-zip advantage. It's been four years since South Lake started the season 3-0. Senior quarterback Kawan Robertson heaves it up and great concentration by Malcolm Smith, keeping his feet inbounds, 25-yard touchdown, Cavs trail by a penny. More from South Lake in the second quarter. Robertson using his speed, sells the fake perfectly, he gone, 40-yard score. The two-point conversion failed, 12-7 game. Lamphere responded two and a half minutes later. Hernandez getting the handoff. Textbook blocking by the O-line. 14-yard TD. Rams back up a deuce. Under two minutes to go in the half. South Lake driving. Robertson gets it off in time and connects with Smith. Cavs take the lead again, 18-14. Ensuing kickoff. Rams special teams go to work. Again, great blocking opens up a hole and see you later. Senior Javari Johnson, untouched, 85 yards to the crib. Lamphere back up three. Think the first half highlights are complete? Think again. 24 seconds later, Robertson finds nobody to throw to, so he goes in alone. Go get it, son. 39-yard TD. Cavaliers led 24 to 21 at the break. Move to the fourth quarter now. Lamphere once again in striking distance. Hernandez scores his third rushing touchdown. They went for two and got it. The Cavaliers looking to get the go-ahead score with a minute left. Robertson pressured and hit as he throws. Pass is picked off by the junior Tristan Gist and that would do it in a thriller. Madison Heights Lamphere hangs on to beat South Lake 29 to 24 the final. Rams remain unbeaten and take sole possession of first place in the Mac Bronze Division. I'm Jeremy Otto and we go to the Southwest 10 Conference Showdown as Centerville went on the road to take on Menden, both teams coming in at 3-0. Pick things up in the first quarter with Centerville driving. Senior quarterback Sam Todd lofts it up and Tristan McElroy comes down with it for the 25-yard score. They're all fired up as the Bulldogs had 8-0 after the opening quarter of play. We skip forward to the second with five minutes to go. Centerville marching again. Jared Spencer powers his way in for the three-yard score. Bulldogs now up by 14. Then the Bulldogs were barking, just three minutes left in the half. It's Todd doing it with his legs this time. Sal's the fake, finds the sideline and the house for the 34-yard score. They ended up getting the two-point conversion as well and led by 22 as we headed into halftime. Menden looking for any momentum they could find, going for it on fourth down with under a minute to go in the third. Chris Dupree's passes Picked off by a diving Tyler Swanwick, and it was still 22 zip Centerville as we headed to the fourth. It would just be too much for the Bulldogs this night. It's Todd who sells the fake once again and rumbles his way in for the 20 yard touchdown. He would add another score as Centerville goes on to shut out Menden 36 to nothing. The win clinches the Southwest 10 Conference title. It's the first conference title for the Bulldogs in 41 years. I'm Zach Herrick from the West Michigan area. In the OK Silver, Hopkins putting a 16-game conference winning streak on the line at Belding in a battle of unbeatens. 
After a belting fumble on the first offensive snap, Hopkins capitalizes. Matt Reynolds takes the direct snap from two yards out and scores. It'd be 6-0 after the two-point conversion was no good. But Belding would answer right back. On fourth and goal, Tyler Cooper takes the handoff, stretches outside, and scores from a yard out. We'd be tied at six. And in the second quarter, Cooper would continue his big day. He bursts through the hole and goes 77 yards for the score. The two-point conversion is good, and we'd be tied at 14 all at halftime. But in the third quarter, it would be all Hopkins. Trevor Smith goes deep for his favorite target, Colin Weber. 52 yards to the house, 20 to 14 Vikings. Two point try would be unsuccessful. But the Black Knights would simply not go away. Down 28 22, and Cash Blunt hits Kyle Prosser for 56 yards, and he gets into the end zone. Belding ties the game at 28 all with under three minutes left. But the two-point conversion would be no good. And inside the final minute, Hopkins takes the lead on a one-yard quarterback keeper from Trevor Smith, his fourth total touchdown of the game to make it 34-28. Belding with one last chance, but Jason Sapp comes up with the interception for the Vikings, his second pick of the game, and Hopkins wins its 17th consecutive OK Silver game, 34-28 the final as the Vikings improve to 4-0 on the season. Great win! Now, give your crowd the fight, son. Yeah! yeah. Well, good day, ladies and gentlemen, back in the State Champs Network studio and back for a quick update in our State Champs Mr. Football competition presented by Hungry Howie. Sean Belizean with me, and we have our first shakeup in the race to name the top football player in the state here in 2020. Let us first tell you that just because someone falls out of our top 10 does not mean that he cannot play his way back in. Now, with that said, in order to make way for our new entrant for now, River Rouge quarterback Marion Rabowski is out of it. Well, and, and you know, Lauren, we've seen it happen before where a guy came off and came back on. And this is the one thing that we say each and every year when we do this. The list is fluid. So maybe the name that you think should be on there isn't on there right now. That doesn't mean that that name won't appear on a future list. Maybe even this week. Well, there you go. All right. Perhaps the epitome of what a high school football player is now enters the race. Making the most of the talent God gave you, this guy can no longer stay off our list. He played his way in. Absolutely, and you brought up a great point. Forget his size, forget the measurables. It's all about productivity. So Brady Rose, no doubt about it, this kid belongs on our list. Now check this out. This is just from last week. 8 minutes and 41 seconds of game time. You ready for this? A 63-yard touchdown pass, a 54-yard punt return, a 70-yard touchdown reception, a 3-yard run. Oh, by the way, he wasn't done. A pick 6 for 45 yards, but wait, there's more. He blocked a field goal after that. He's 5'7", 172. He's all over the field, obviously making plays all over the field. You might remember this young man was the star of the D2 championship game last year as well. He picked up where he left off in 2019. No doubt about it. I love how you said it, Lauren. He played his way on this list. Brady Rose is one of them. Absolutely. Congratulations. You know, well over 10,000 votes have been cast in this competition, and we thank you for taking an active role in supporting the player you believe should be in the final running for the top spot in Michigan high school football. East Lansing's Andrew Anthony was a Final Four candidate a year ago. He won the popular vote a year ago, and right on cue, his supporters have gone to statechampsnetwork.com, clicked on the contest tab, and voted for their guy over and over. As of Thursday, he was approaching 5,000 votes 
himself. Sean, the next several weeks are critical to see who stays in and who falls off. Absolutely, Lauren, it is. And, and you're going to see some more movement. It happens every year. One guy that certainly is a mainstay on this list is DJ Stepney. He's a senior running back, safety from Macomb, Dakota. He's another guy. Does a little bit of everything. Don't pay attention to, to what his position says. He does a little bit of everything. He can run, catch, tackle, picks off passes, return kicks. How about this? 21-7 win over Gross Point South last Friday. He blocked a field goal, had a long run to set up the first score, then picked off the very first play when Gross Point South got the ball back. Six foot, 182 pounder, heading to Central Michigan. Uh, Lauren, I'll tell you what, this list is exceptional, but it's a list, we say it each and every year, that is fluid. Yes, movement can, and in all likely will happen. Absolutely. Stay safe, people. We'll be back next week for another update in this year's State Champs Mr. Football Race, presented by Hungry. Hungry Howie's wants to thank you. Because for every pizza sold in October, we make a donation to the National Breast Cancer Foundation. And together we've raised millions of dollars just by doing what you love. Hungry? Howie's. It was a beautiful fall day for the Girls Golf Division I Regionals at Lapeer Country Club. I'm Greg Molson with the highlights, and let's start with Grand Blank, looking to make up for last year's runner-up finish when the Bobcats lost to Okemos by just one shot. The Cats are led by Kate Brody, knocking down the birdie putt on the 12th. The super sophomore leading the way, but Grand Blank's strength is its depth. Taylor Condal was one of three Bobcats shooting in the 80s. She had an 80. The top competition would come from Heartland and Brighton. Maggie Patila set the pace for the Bulldogs, shooting a 77, leading Brighton to a second place finish in the team race. As the Cats held off the Dogs, Brody and Graham Blank shooting a team score of 326 to beat Brighton by eight shots, with Heartland coming in third. All three teams qualify for states. I'm really excited. Um, we lost by one last year, so um, coming back and um, winning, which it was a big goal of ours. And we've all played pretty well today, so um, I think everybody's really happy with winning. It, it was one of our goals from the season, so everyone's pretty excited. Uh, we're pretty deep this year, you know, pretty solid. And again, that, you know, my seniors and stuff come through, so no, it's, uh, it's a team, team effort out there. In the individual race, Brody shot a 74, giving her the lead in the clubhouse when she finished. But still out on the course, Holtz Natita Herr had a five shot lead. That gap would tighten, however, after her triple bogey the 12th and followed with another bogey on the 13th. She then needed to par the final two holes to hold on for the win. She starts with a nice 40 foot putt on the 14th to set up an easy two putt. Then on her final hole, she had to get up and down from right short of the green to win and check out this shot. That gave Natita her medalist honors with a 73. I was, uh, I was a little bit pressured, but you know, I just had to keep my tempo in mind and then just hit the shot. It means a lot, you know, I put a, a lot of hard work into this. I practiced a lot. So it means a lot. I'm very happy to win the regionals this year. Let's jump into the pool at Flint Kersley, where Davison was hosting Bay City Central in a Saginaw Valley League dual meet. I'm Greg Molson with the highlights of a dominating night for Davison, starting with a win by freshman Lauren Auger, winning the 200-yard IM with a time of 2.45.6. The Cardinals are loaded with fast freshmen. Up next, it's Emerson Irway winning the 50-yard freestyle in 26.93 seconds. Taking a break from the swimming for a little diving, sophomore Miriam Griffin had a career best score of 150.30. It's junior Grace Dorman swimming away from the field in the 100 butterfly, winning in 119.52. 
Then it's back to Auger getting her second win of the night, taking the 100 free in 103.57. It's another freshman, Maddie Holdy, winning the 500 free in a personal best time of 605.66. Emerson Irway adds her second win of the meet, taking the 100-yard backstroke in 110.93. In the 100-yard breaststroke, it's another Davison freshman, Maddie Flynn, adding her second first-place finish of the night with a time of 117.94. And finally, the Cardinals wrap things up with a final win in the 400-yard freestyle relay beating Bay City Central 92-57 on the night to improve to 3-0 for the season. I'm Chuck Pellerito and we head to a Mac Red Showdown. Both teams coming in at 2-1. The hosting Chippewa Valley Big Reds wearing their purple cancer awareness jerseys, taking on newcomers in the red this year, the Gross Point South Blue Devils. First drive for the Big Reds, and they are on the doorstep. Cephas Harris gets the call off the left side and cruises on in for the three-yard score. Chip up early, 7-0. That would hold until late in the second when Ryan Schuster would strike. Great ball fake, and he gets it out to a wide-open Jalen Housie. He'll go 64 yards to the house as the Big Reds held a 14-point lead at the break. But on the second half kickoff, the Blue Devils would catch a break, recovering the muffed catch. That would lead to junior Will Johnson lining up in the Wildcat. He'll take it himself 14 yards. Gross Point South only trailing 14 to 7. Then following a high snap on the punt, Blue Devils take over with great field position. Johnson again in the Wildcat. This time the shovel pass to Egan Sullivan. He'll hit the corner, turn it up, and go untouched 14 yards for the score. We had a tie ball game. Chip would add a field goal at the end of the third, but back come the Blue Devils and on the goal line again. Sullivan gets the call, goes up the gut for the five-yard score. Gross Point South out in front, 21-17. Chippewa Valley would start this drive on their own five. No timeouts, just over a minute to go. Down on the Blue Devil, eight. Schuster drops back, looks for Maddox Altamoreno, but great defense by Luke Serbernock. And Gross Point South in a three-way tie atop the Mac Red as they beat Chippewa Valley, 21-17 the final score. They'll score off with Stevenson next week for a shot at the title. Plant and we go to Novi for a KLAA West Division showdown between 1 and 2 Novi and 2 and 1 Howell. Buckle up. If you love scoring, this one's for you. Howell, fresh off back to back wins over Salem and Heartland. First quarter, the Highlanders' defense makes a play. Don't ask me how, but linebacker Noah Ramonetis strips the ball and will take it the other way for six. Just minutes into this game, and Howell with a 7 0 lead. Novi trying to regroup. They beat Plymouth a week ago. Ensuing drive. Sophomore quarterback Luke Aurelia hits a wide open Gavin Parenti. Wildcats in business. A few plays later, the senior Maurice Langford slams his way in. After the first quarter, we were tied at seven. Second quarter, Howell put up two scores. Following Novi's second turnover, this is the running back, August Johanningsmeyer. Dislocated his shoulder a week before the start of the season. His first game back, and he got the rock a lot. At the half, Howell led 21-7. Now the second half is where both teams got their groove on and Novi struck first. Howell preparing to go up 17 points. Botch field goal attempt. Parenti's picking it up and taking it the length of the field for the touchdown. Wildcats botch the PAT, climbing back in it though trailing by eight. But the Highlanders weren't having it orchestrating a nine-play, 59-yard drive that ate up 348 off the clock. Joe Henningsmeyer, his second rushing TD of the game, 28-13 Howe. But Wildcats immediately swung back. First play from scrimmage on the ensuing drive, the senior Isaiah Washington. He has reservations for six. 65 yards to the house. Still four minutes left in the third. Novi back within eight. Then it looked like Novi was really going to swing momentum. Quarterback Nolan Petru picked off here in the red zone, but pass interference called, so Highlanders still with the ball. Start of the fourth now, and Petru makes them pay. QB dive, it's 35-20. 
but Novi not throwing in the towel by any means. Back with the ball, three plays, 65 yards later, the senior Alexander Vargas adds his name to the score sheet. Just under 10 minutes to go, Wildcats trail 35-27 but the Highlanders put it away after getting great field position on the attempted onside kick. Six plays, 51 yard drive, Petru back in the paint. The Wildcats would get another score, but too little too late. Highlanders win the shootout at the Wildcat Corral. 42 to 33 the final. The junior August Joe Hanningsmeyer with over 30 carries and over 200 yards in his first game of the season. It was my first week back, I was excited to play. The lineman had the same blocks tonight, I couldn't have done without him. We were just excited to play. We were hyped up for that. We wanted to beat Nova. They're a good team. They're a good team this year, so we just wanted to come and beat them. In our love for the rah, 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 hell, hell, the game's all here. Run our colors bold. We'll stick together for our dear green and go go green. It was homecoming night for the Tigers. They were looking to kick off homecoming on the right note while Posen was trying to take away their fun. For the majority of the first half, both offenses had a hard time moving the football down the field, which was leading to turnovers or punts. But let's pick it up in the second quarter. Sean Hennigan hands it off to London Atkins and he'll punch it in from two yards out. Two point try was no good. Six nothing Hillman going into the half. At halftime, they announced their homecoming king and queen. And this year it goes to Emily Liss and Terry Hager. Congratulations to those two. But back to the game. Posen needed a kickstart in the second half and they got it from senior number 12, Lucas Stone. He would break a few tackles, weave his way through traffic, and would take this kickoff all the way to the house. Two point try was successful. 8 6, Vikings. But Hillman would respond after that. AJ Jones hands it off to Sean Hennigan. He'll punch it in from a few yards out. Tigers lead 14 8. Posen would try to get the lead back, but they cough up the football. And London Atkins falls on top of the ball for a big turnover. And from there, Hillman would close out the game. Fourth quarter, Atkins runs right, cuts back in the middle, and says, see you later. The sophomore rush for 144 yards with three touchdowns as Hillman goes on to defeat Posen for the sixth consecutive time, winning this one by a score of 26 to 16. Let's take a look at an important rules change for the upcoming season. Among the rules changes in high school football for the 2020-21 school year is an adjustment in penalty assessed to the defense for disconcerting acts and sounds. Among the gamesmanship that sometimes takes place near the line of scrimmage at the start of a play, defensive players have been known to make sounds or act in a manner which otherwise might distract an offensive player waiting for the snap signal. Previously, the most egregious of these actions would be penalized 15 yards for unsportsmanlike conduct. But beginning this year, the disconcerting act foul is a five yard penalty. The change in the rule actually makes it more likely that this kind of behavior will be flagged and may eventually lead to a reduction in this type of behavior. To learn more about football rules and football rules changes, please visit the MHSAA website. Did you record an unbelievable touchdown, a game-winning goal, or just a proud parent moment? Then we want your clip. Upload your video to the brand new State Champs Network app so we can feature it on one of our shows and give your player, team, and school the recognition they deserve. All it takes is just a few easy clicks, and every clip that is submitted will automatically be eligible for prizes. Download the State Champs Network app today for iPhone and Android devices. I'm Mike Erlitis. We head to Rochester Adams High School for action in the OAA, as the Highlanders host the undefeated Cougars of Stony Creek. Cougars eating up the yards on their initial drive. Running back Cameron Burford taking the snap as he finds Cole Lumen. That would set up the TD. This time Burford would take it himself up the gut, giving Stony Creek a 7-0 lead after one. 
Second quarter, Cougars again with the ball, now up 10-0 and threatening once again. QB Ryan Eckhout connects with Burford for six more. Stony Creek looking strong, up 16-3 as we head to the half. More of the same offense from the Cougars in the third. It's Burford once again. He goes untouched, up the gut for another TD. His third on the night as Stony Creek's lead increases to 23-3. We stay in the third. Adams with possession and looking for a big play. And the freshman Brady Priestcorn delivers just that. A great catch over the D-back from a pass by Parker Pico. Highlanders down 23-10 after three quarters of play. Adams having to hurry and play some catch up at this point. Pico airs it out, but the Cougars Carson Chambers comes up with the INT. That would seal the Highlanders fate as Stony Creek improves their record to 4-0 as they top Rochester Adams by a final score of 23-10. I'm Ryan Slocum. We go to a first place showdown in the Macomb Area Conference Gold Division with East Point hosting the Panthers from Roseville. We'll pick it up with no score in the second half. Roseville's Robert Salter tries to dump it off, but the screen door is slammed shut by Maurice Davis. He picks it off and returns it 20 yards for the touchdown. Shamrocks lead it eight to nothing. Still in the third, the East Point offense now getting involved. Quarterback Ronald Jackson keeps it. He dives in for the 11-yard score. Shamrocks up 16 zip going into the fourth but there was no quit in Roseville. Salter throws it deep, almost picked off, but the ball finds its way into the hands of Tyrell Henry for the 40-yard touch. The Panthers now down just 10 at 16-6. The Shamrocks come right back at him. It's Jackson again. He slips two tackles and takes it 15 yards to the crib. His second of the night, East Point now in front 22-6. Roseville has another answer, and it doesn't get much better than this. Salter throws it to the end zone. The ball is tipped, and check out the concentration by Amari Snowden. He holds it in for the touchdown. We've got a 10-point game again at 22-12, but East Point had too much on this night. With under two minutes to go, Jackson heaves it deep and connects with Tayshawn Trent in stride, and he dives to the end zone for the 50-yard score. East Point goes on to win 28-12 the final. The Shamrocks clinch the Mac Gold title. It's their first conference championship in 35 years. I'm Mike Erlitis. We head to Wayne State University for a non-conference matchup between the hosting Pilots of De La Salle taking on the undefeated DeWitt Panthers. We take it towards the end of the first. DeWitt with the ball, already up 10-0. QB Tyler Holtz recovers his fumble, scrambles and finds Lucas Presser. Check out that catch in the end zone. Panthers out to a 16-0 lead after one. No let up in the second for DeWitt. Great pass from Holtz to Thomas McIntosh, and he's gone. 80 yards down the sideline for another six. Panthers lead increases to 23. Final seconds left of the second. DeWitt now up 30-0, but the Pilots looking for some points before the half. Cody Cummins drills the 50-yard field goal as De La Salle trails 30-3 after two quarters of play. DeWitt piling it on in the second half with two more touchdowns in the third. Here's Grant Yule taking the handoff 21 yards to Pater, followed up by a 32-yard scamper from Holtz off the keeper. That would be plenty for the Panthers as DeWitt improves to 4-0 on the season, winning in dominating fashion, 43-3 your final. I'm Kevin Trzinski coming to you from Ann Arbor for this SEC Red Division matchup between Crosstown rivals Skyline and Pioneer. The Eagles of Skyline are one of the top teams in the state, and they wasted no time opening up the scoring with senior forward Peter Pequa slipping this one through the challenge. Eagles up 1-0 eight minutes into the contest. 
Less than 10 minutes left in the half. The Pioneers would tie this baby up thanks to the cross by senior Jack Yerkes and off the right boot and into the back of the net. Dan Gutenberg getting the job done. Game tied, Pioneers won, Skyline won. Still in the first half and Pioneer is awarded the free kick taken by senior Garrett Shroud. That kick is off and a butte. Senior James Cameron thinking with his head and into the back of the net. Pioneer takes the lead, two to one at the half. 10 minutes into the second, Skyline on the attack. Pioneer keeper Zach Wilhelm playing very aggressive, trying to keep the pressure on the ball, but Peter Peckwall will settle it and cross it to a diving Gabe Kalman off his head, hitting the twine. The senior ties his game up at two all. More from the Eagle, Gabe Kelman. The senior makes a beeline straight to the net, running past all sorts of defenders. Wilhelm will come out to challenge, but Kelman is on a mission to score and he will do just that. Skyline comes from behind to defeat Pioneer. Three to two, your final score. I'm Jeremy Otto, and we go to volleyball in the Detroit Catholic High School League as the defending Division I state champs Farmington Hills Mercy Marlins went on the road to take on their rivals, the Mustangs from Bloomfield Hills Marion. The Marlins coming in at 22-0, having only lost one set all season. We pick things up in the first set with Mercy in the near court. The Michigan State recruit and Miss Volleyball candidate Julia Bishop sends it over to senior Kaylin Collins, who hammers it off the hands of the blockers on the other side for the point. Marion ranks seventh in the latest Division I rankings. It's sophomore setter Ava Safara with the quick dish to fellow sophomore Reagan Sass, who gets it through for the kill. Mustangs up 21 to 19. But the Marlins would prevail in the opening set. Following a good rally, it's Bishop catching the Mustangs off guard and sinking one down for the winner, as Mercy would take the first set 25 to 23. Mercy looking to carry that momentum into the second as Bishop gets it to Ali Tisco, who lofts it down for the kill. Well, it went back and forth again in the second as Safara for Marion bumps it over to junior Sophia Treader, who snatches back the lead for the Mustangs 10 to nine. Back come the Marlins just a few plays later. Bishop sends it to the Northern Illinois commit Charlie Atiemo, who blasted home. Mercy now up a pair, 12 to 10. We go later in the set now, tied at 23. Following another good rally, it's the junior Ava Bizard sending it straight down the line and right at us as well for the kill. Marion up 24 to 23. But the Marlins would rally and tally the next three points. Bishop to the junior Liz Kitchen who punishes this ball to give Mercy a 26 to 24 victory in set two and a two zip advantage overall. It would be all Farmington Hills Mercy the rest of the way. Julia Bishop was on her game, setting it up for her teammates, here getting it to Collins for another winner. The future Spartan, Bishop had a game-high 40 assists, this one to junior Leah LaFontaine, which finds the floor. As Farmington Hills Mercy goes on to sweep Marion in three sets and improves to 23-0 on the season. To get caught up with the latest in Michigan high school football, check out the State Champs Michigan Extra Point Podcast. Matt Mowry, Scott Bernstein, and myself, Lauren Plant, talk about the latest results, the Mr. Football and Anvil competitions, and preview the week ahead. You can listen to State Champs Michigan's Extra Point Podcast wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. Hello and thank you for checking out the latest update in our quest to determine who will be this year's winner of the Anvil Award presented by Hungry Howie's. A big piece of metal just sitting on top of a trophy that symbolizes that toughness, the grit, even the pain that it takes to do the unheralded work in the trenches, to move a group one way down the field or another. This is the Michigan Hall of Fame coach Tim Beckler who joins me each and every week as we discuss candidates in the running for this year's Anvil. Coach, as always, thanks for being here. We go west for your candidate breakdown today. Yes, and north. We'll talk about the west first. Raquan Buckley from Wyoming Godwin Heights, 6'7", 280 pounds, plays offensive tackle and defensive tackle. He's got offers from uh, numerous offers, but some of the mainstays are Michigan State, Nebraska, and Oregon. Uh, he's also a basketball player. 
When I watch this young man, the first thing that jumps off, and this is junior tape now, mind you, is fast. Now, you wouldn't think of an offensive lineman as fast, but I wonder what this kid's 40 time is because he is fast. Would you say that now coaches at the next level, being college, are looking for guys who, in the trenches, are more athletic? They're looking for speed now as opposed to maybe the way they used to be. No question. They're looking for height and speed. Again, length of arms, you can cover more area. And obviously speed, you can cover more space as well, especially, you know, offensive tackles and your defensive linemen. He's got great punch on offense, playing tackle. He's got great leg drive, and uh, he's a mauler. For, for being a taller guy, he puts people on their backs. Uh, on defense, he's got a fast takeoff, as you can imagine. And again, he's dangerous, just as dangerous when you run away from him because he can run things down. Um, that most big defensive guys can't get to, but he does. You mentioned North. We said last week that uh, we were going to have Carson uh, profiled this week uh, and, um, you know, another outstanding talent. Yeah, Carson Briggs from Traverse City Central, six foot five, 270 pounds. Plays offensive tackle and offensive guard. So, and again, as a coach, when you move kids around, that's pretty impressive um, because that's two different positions. It's different blocking schemes. Um, and he's this kind of an old throwback player. His, he will do what his coach and his team needs him to do, and that's impressive. He's also a basketball player. He's committed to Western Michigan University. The thing I love about him is his pass blocking. He's got a wide base, and what I mean by that is his feet are a little bit wider than his shoulders, but when you move, you want your feet to stay that width. Other, you know, because defensive pass blockers are rushers. They can grab you, throw you, push you, pull you, smack your hands, and if you don't have a great uh, base and a great weight back punch, um, that's when people can beat you, and he's got excellent technique. And when he run blocks, he's just a finisher. Uh, all he does is put people on the ground. He's impressive. All right, well, this whole list is impressive. I want to thank you, Coach, and thank you out there who have been actively participating in voting for these Warriors every day at statechampsnetwork.com. You can, too, by clicking on the contest tab as of filming this segment on Thursday. We have more votes cast in the Anvil Award than we do for Mr. Football. That is unprecedented. Well over 13,000 are in the books. Rocco Spindler running away with it right now, but Carson M. Raquan second and third respectively. So good on you. We'll have another update next week, and I believe perhaps our first shakeup in the competition. If you would like to nominate a candidate for the 2020 State Champs Amateur Award, go to statechampsnetwork.com, go to the media and schedule tab and click connect to send us an email. Now it's time to take a look inside Lawrence Tech. Since the campus reopened at the end of August, the entire L2 staff has been working hard to keep students safe by enforcing strict COVID-19 protocols. Nowhere is that more evident than at the Blue Devil Cafe, where the dining services team has increased their already rigorous policies to provide delicious and nutritious meals for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Their chefs stand ready to serve up a variety of menu items, including fresh entrees and salads, international cuisine, pasta, pizza, vegetarian options, and so much more. They will even customize items based on dietary restrictions. Besides the campus-wide mandatory screening surveys and masks, some of the big changes at the cafe include a mandatory carryout policy to comply with social distancing efforts. The staff has also started delivering meals to students who must quarantine in their dorm rooms. For more information about the Blue Devil Cafe, visit Lawrence Tech's website at ltu.edu. I'm Jenna Rose, and we go to Lake Erie Metro Park for a Downriver League cross country tri meet. Gibraltar Carlson, Trenton, and Wyandotte Roosevelt competing in this one. Runner, back! And we begin with the boys. 
The sophomore Michael McCooch from Wyandotte Roosevelt would jump out to the lead and never look back as he would win by a minute with a time of 17 minutes and 16 seconds. Trenton's Ethan Rooney, Owen Peterson, and Dallas Wilson would finish in the top five as the Trojans would go on to win the team portion of the tri-meet. Now to the ladies. Another sophomore repping Wyandotte Roosevelt was Samantha Cost as she separated herself from the pack as she would go on to win with a time of 20 minutes. The Marauders from Gibraltar Carlson had Grace Norton, Ariana Pate, and Julia Mills placed in the top five as they went on to win the tri-meet. We're here to play our game today, the way you guys have been playing this whole year, right? We're undefeated for a reason, because you guys want to be. You want to work hard, you want to win, you don't like to lose, okay? So take that into you as you start this game and make sure you're playing and ready to play as soon as that whistle blows. I'm Jeremy Otto and we go to field hockey as Gross Point South made the quick 10 minute trip to take on the Knights from Gross Point Woods University Leggett. Gross Point South coming in unbeaten at 8-0-1 in the season and had their chances in the first half. It's Carly Gessel who shifts it off to Kate Scoopian. Their shot attempt is towed away by sophomore net keeper Alexandra Karolak. Look at the 2018 Division II state champs with a great opportunity right before the end of the half. A pair of sophomores, Brooke Summers, gets it to Olivia Thomas, but South goalie Elise Charbonneau is there to kick it away. It was scoreless as we headed to halftime. Rose Point South was rewarded with a penalty stroke in the second half, and it would be Scoopian that would do the honors, and the senior busted into the left corner. That would be your only goal of the game as Gross Point South celebrates a 1-0 rival win. The Blue Devils remain undefeated at 9-0-1 on the year. First place in the Stars division of the Flint Metro League on the line with the Brandon Blackhawks looking to keep their perfect record intact taking on the Blue Devils of Lake Fenton, looking to bounce back from a loss to Goodrich last week. I'm Greg Molson, and it's the home team coming out fast. Micah Miller letting it fly for Jawan Slater. That's good for a 35-yard score, and the Blackhawks were just getting started. Up next, it's A.J. Fisher blocking the punt and recovering the ball in the end zone for another touchdown. And for the first time this season, the band and student section were there to join in on the fun. They'd have more fun. Joan Slater with his second touchdown of the night. This one comes on the ground from 21 yards out to make it 21 to nothing just midway through the first quarter. The Blue Devils finally join the party. Reed Shoemaker throwing it up. Colin Wade brings it down, eludes the defender, and takes it in to get Lake Fenton on the board. But the Devils could not stop the Blackhawks. Check out the final play of the first half. It's Miller with a Hail Mary from the 45. Brayton McQueen hauls it in and takes it in, putting Brandon up 43 to eight at halftime. Lake Fenton continued to fight. Shoemaker gets hammered here, but still gets the pass off, complete to Walker Ridgeway. He takes care of the rest, cutting back, and taking off Ridgeway going all the way for an 80-yard score. But it's the Blackhawks cruising to the win. McQueen adds his second touchdown of the night while Slater had four. Brandon remains unbeaten, winning it 50 to 23. I'm Ryan Slocum. We go to the Huron League Showdown with the defending league champs, Milan, on the road to take on the Chiefs from New Boston Huron. The Big Reds coming in at 2-1 on the season. They were driving in the first. This is the junior, Cole McIlvaney, on the keeper. He works his way around the right side and in for the five-yard touchdown. PAT no good. It's six to nothing. Huron comes in 3-0 to start the year. They respond on the next drive. On fourth and goal, senior quarterback Chase Molnar rolls and fires across his body where only Matthew Williams can catch it. 
and does he ever. Both feet down for the touchdown. The Chiefs take the lead at 7-6, and it would stay that way into the second half. But it would be all Milan the rest of the way. Capitalizing on the turnover in the third, the junior Jet Isaacs powers his way in from three yards out. The Big Reds led it 12-7, heading into the final frame. And they were inside the Big Red zone once again in the fourth. On third and goal, McIlvaney dumps it to the senior Zach Abbey, who goes in for the 10-yard touch. That makes it 18-7, and they would add some insurance with six minutes to go. It's McIlvaney once again, stretching the ball out. He crosses the plane for his second rushing TD on the night, as Milan beats New Boston Huron for the third year in a row, 24-7 the final. It was big, you know, a lot of people were doubting us. We were in an underdog role, and they're a great team, and we just prepared all week, and we just came out, we just came out with a win. I'm Milan, you are doing fine. Do your best for MHS and victory for this time. I'm Milan, I'm Milan, fight hard for your big, big red. Fight, Milan, fight, and you will win. I'm Kevin Trozinski reporting from Southline High School for this Lakes Valley Conference matchup between the Lions and the Warriors of Wall Lake Western. Those said Warriors are undefeated in conference play, sharing the top spot with Lakeland, and South Lion finds themselves tied for third. The Lions D handled the Warrior offense on the first drive of the game, forcing them to punt the ball. Special teams would play a key part before the Lions O even touched the field. Junior return man Quinn Farcasi turns on the Jets and he scores on the punt return. Lions converted two points and lead 8-zip. Less than 20 seconds later, the Warriors would respond in a big way. Mr. Football candidate Zach Trainer under center, throw this bomb right into the arms of fellow senior Justin Gabriel, 60 yards to the house. However, the Warriors trail by a penny, 8-7 Lions lead. Just over halfway through the first quarter, Wall Lake Western inching their way down the field. Trainer once again making big plays with his cannon of an arm. Sophomore Darius Taylor beats the defenders in the end zone and he secures the 35-yard score. Warriors up 3, 14-11 at the break. South Lion got into some trouble after the Warrior D scored off a fumble return and here's the Lions QB, Dawson Scuppin, keeping his team in the game. Play action, dumps it off to tight end Jack Pesh and the senior gets the 5-yard score. However, Lions down by 4, 21-17 at the end of the third. This night belonged to Mr. Football candidate Zach Trainer and the Warriors. Just how good is this QB? Well, he was tossing out Halloween candy to all of his receivers. No butterfingers here. Senior Pierce Mathewey Edwards snags the payday. Trainer tossed four TDs in this one as Wald Lake Western defeats South Lion 35 to 24, your final score. All right, guys, that's it for this week. Remember, all of our State Champs Michigan content can be found on our State Champs Michigan social media platforms. You can also watch all of our shows not just on the social media platforms, not just on the website, but also on our free downloadable app. Just search State Champs Sports. Check it all out. We'll see you next week. State Champs Michigan's high school sports show is presented by Lawrence Technological University and Lawrence Tech Athletics. For everything LTU, visit ltu.edu. You can recruit yourself to any of Lawrence Tech's 27 collegiate athletic teams by visiting ltuathletics.com. Also brought to you by the Michigan High School Athletic Association, promoting the value and values of educational athletics. The Michigan Army National Guard, a proud partner of the MHSAA. And by Hungry Howie, famous for flavor.